All right, let's look at one last topic of chapter 12. And if you look at this formula sheet, we we'll cover everything up here for kinematics, except for this thing called dependent motion. Let's look at it. Now, dependent motion, what it means is simply one particle is dependent on the other. And now we're concerned with multiple particles, okay? Because prior to this, we've only been looking at just one particle, right? So, in a case where we have more than one particle, then what are the relationships between them? Okay? Knowing the velocity of one, can we know the velocity of the other? Actually, we can, if they are attached to one another okay, by a string or a cord or something. Okay? So, let's consider this case. Now, the only equation they need to know as far as this multiple particle and dependent motion is concerned is this right here. L is quark length, which is the length of it, the string attaching the particle. C is this constant. Okay, so quark length equals constant. Okay? For example, this picture right here. Now we have two pulleys right here. Okay? And then this red is the cord. Okay? The piece of string. Right, a single piece of cord. Okay? Now we have two particles, particle A and particle B. Now, I can define my coordinates as x pointing down. Okay? So, this particle A has a position x A. I measure from the top, just this roof right here. And then B has coordinates x B. And then this stretch right here, okay, between this pulley and this particle A, I call it L1. Between this pulley and the next pulley, I call it L2. And then the third stretch is L3. Okay? So basically, this, these three visible red cords, okay? that's L1, L2, and L3. Okay. Let's start with this equation right here. Now, quark length equals constant. Now, that's a fact. Okay? Now, that's a very, very important starting point okay, in analyzing this kind of motion. So, quark length is constant. Okay, what does that mean? Well, let's bring in some of these things right here. L okay, is the sum of this L1, L2, and L3 plus this little half circle and half circle right here. But since those two are constant, they're always constant, so I don't have to explicitly write it out. So it's been absorbed into this constant right here. So left hand side, I have L1 plus L2 plus L3 equals constant. That's all. Now, <clears throat> but I don't want to just stick with L1, L2, and L3. I want to bring in Okay, so because that's more of a formal definition of, of displacement, right? X. So and then from X we can get velocity later. Okay, let's look at the relationship between L1 and X. This is L1. Okay, is this stretch right here? X. X A. Okay, is this stretch right here? So they're simply off by this much. Okay, which is the distance of this little, uh, little stretch right here, okay? So, the height of this first pulley. So, L1 plus S1 is X8. So, I can do this. I can L1, I can just simply add S1 in here. Okay, I can do that. No problem. Plus, L2 is this stretch, okay? But if I add, S1 to L2, right? Now add, add S2 to L2 as well. Right? What do I get? L2 plus S1 plus S2. I get XB, right? The third one, L3, again, if I add S2 to 
L3, I get XBO. So, okay. so I've added these S's okay, to this left hand side. But since they are all constant, they are also constant on the right hand side, just that I've added you know, some extra constant to my existing constant. Right? So let's call it C prime, some other constant. So this is xA, second is xB, the third term is again xB, and it equals some constant C prime. Okay. So therefore, xA plus 2 xB is some constant. Okay. There you have it. <coughs> but that's not it. Okay. What we want is the relationship between these two particles okay, for the velocity and acceleration. So, how do we get velocity from x? The position. Okay. Simply just take the derivative. Okay. So differentiate. Now I differentiate this equation. So what do we get? X A becomes B A. X B becomes Z B. Right hand side is a constant. Zero. That's all. Okay. Now differentiate again. Differentiate this equation again. We get a a plus two a b right hand side again constant. That's all. Okay. So the simple as that. So that's the relationship between the two velocities. Okay. V a. If you remove this term to the other side, so you can see a v a is actually two times a v b, but negative sign. Right. So one goes up, one goes down. Same thing for acceleration. Let's look at an example.